Welcome back to the channel everyone. As you can see the spindle in my Webeco D6000 lathe is missing. Pretty much in the last couple of years this lathe has been giving me some trouble. At first I needed to tighten the bearings a couple of times to remove chatter and more recently it started cutting a significant taper. It seems that from the factory this rear spindle bearing seat is knurled. I don't know why they did that but it seems like a poor design in my opinion. What I think has happened is that when the bearing was installed at the factory the knurling was compressed allowing the bearing to move a tiny bit and over the years that tiny movement just compressed the knurling more and more until it became a problem. So now I've got a few options to fix it. I can buy a new spindle turn down this portion of the shaft and glue a bushing on or just try and knurl it again. A new spindle is way too expensive and the spindle wall thickness is only about 5mm so out of all those options I think trying to knurl the shaft again with a slightly coarser pitch is the way to go as I don't want to weaken the spindle and I can always remove metal later. The first thing I need to do is remove these racers as I'll be replacing the original Indian bearings with some better quality Japanese ones. I read on the internet that I can just weld a bead on the inside and that will shrink them and they will just fall out. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So now that I've got the bearing races out, I'll probably take a file and notch it in three places here. So that next time I need to pull these races out, I can just knock them out with a punch from the inside. So I've got the spindle chucked up in the lathe and I've got it true to a couple micron. which I think is more than good enough for the application. I've got one end in the four jaw chuck and the other end in a precision live center. First I'm going to go over this part with the knurling tool and then after that I'm going to switch over to the bump tool with the bearing and try and push the knurling down a little bit and smooth it out. So I'm 0.04 millimeters over. I'm just going to use the bump tool to push it down to where I need it to be, which is a very slight interference fit. Just a little bit more. Okay. 
So this is how it's turned out. I'm going to put the spindle in the freezer so that I can slide the first bearing past this point and it'll be time to assemble it and see how it turned out. Fortunately I was able to get a matched pair of precision bearings from my local bearing supplier for a really good price. The ones you see here are P5 Precision and believe it or not are from 1989 so they've been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. So now that we've got everything reassembled, let's check out the run out and do a few test cuts. So I'm getting about 4 micron run out which is pretty good. So let's just take a few cuts and see how it performs. As you can see it gives a good surface finish and I've checked the taper with a micrometer and it's back to factory specifications. So I call this repair a success. Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.